Hey, it's HD Digital Designs, and today I'm going to sh be showing you how to create this light streak in Cinema 4D, similar to something you could get with Particular in Adobe After Effects. Um, so I've got this scene opened here as well. Um, I'm working on a user data that you can use. It's not quite finished yet though, so when it is, you will see that as an annotation over this video. So stop watching it if you can see this annotation. Um, so, it took me a while to figure this out, but essentially it was really easy. And today I'm going to be showing you how to do this. So, new window, ow, that was me banging my leg off of the wall. Anyway, okay, so we're in a new scene here. We're going to get a light, and we are also going to be getting um, a null object for our express, which we will name thusly. I'm going to right click on the null object. Go to Cinema 4D Tags Espresso, and we are going to drag in our null object. We're going to click on the output, the output port, the red square. Go to coordinates, global position, and global position. I'm going to control and double click on the title of that and, re and that will resize it to the minimum size it needs to show all the text in the node. So we're going to right click on a blank space, we're going to go to new node, thinking particles, TP generator and P storm. I'm going to collect, connect the global position of our null to the P storm emitter. Go to the output, output port on the emitter and click particle birth. Again, I'm going to double click and hold control at the same time on the title for that node to resize it. I'm going to come over again to a blank spot, go to new node, thinking particles, TP uh, standard P group. Now you'll notice here it says all. We do not want that, so we will go up here to simulate thinking particles and thinking particle settings. And on this all, we're going to right click and press add. We, now we can either drag this to the attributes panel over here and to the P group, or we can drag it onto the null. Either way suits you. Anyway, so now. I'm going to group these because we're going to be doing a lot more and it's easier if we group these. Um, and what we know, want to do is just put a few keyframes in to show the null's movement and to get a cooler effect. So we'll just add a few keyframes in here. Not too many, just like. And we'll put this back to the start. So there we are. We've got our light and our null traveling along, emitting particles at the same time along our track that we have here. So that's not very interesting. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our Expresso Editor, we're going to get, click the P-Storm node, take the count to about 30. I've played around with these settings so I know what is okay. Life, I recommend 30 or 25. I wouldn't go any higher than 30 or it looks a bit off. Um, I'm going to change the size to 100. 
and then the x and y size to 1. So here we've got a thin flow of particles like that. Might actually just take the count down to about 15. Oh, and we also want to change the x if of, don't know what that means, because I'm an idiot. Um, so we want to change the x and y of from to 0. And we've got this now. Okay. So the fact that we've got this emitting particles and when we render it, it isn't very interesting because we see nothing. So in my example, I had a, a ball of light leading the trail. So we're going to go to our light and to get this effect, sorry, <laughs> to get this effect, we're going to go to lens, glow, we want to change from inactive to star to, I, I used number two, it's up to you though, and we want to change the colour, I'm going to go for a nice oh, green, nice darkish green, like that. Um, now that we have that, you can see when we render it, we've got a massive big ball of star. We do not want this this size, so I'm going to take this down to about 50. That will be okay. Now we're going to make our... Uh, our light colour the same as our star, so I'm just going to get the colour here, 47 and 38. Like that, just to make it the same, because we're nice like that. Um, that was weird. Um, okay, I'm just going to name this group object light. Okay, so we can see our light now, but we can't see the particles. We have no stream going behind it. And to fix that, we are going to go to our NURBS and get a sweet NURB and a circular spline. Take the circle spline down to 10, so it's nice and small, and put that in your sweet NURBS. Um, and to actually get the trail going behind it, we need a tracer object, which is this here. So you also want to put that in your nerves. And my voice cracked there, because puberty sucks. Um, we, if you had the circle in the trace or object in the trace link, delete that because that's not what we want. We want to come back up here to simulate thinking particles and thinking particle settings and put group 1 in there. Okay, now we get something interesting going on. Not what we want though. It's creating all this massive geometry that we do not need. So take the circle above the tracer if you did not have it like that already and now we get this happening. It's better than what we had. It is essentially just tracing every individual particle and making a cylinder for it. So go to fix this, go to your tracer, change the tracing mode to connect elements, and now we've got this happening, which is a lot better. But in my example, it sort of peaked off at the end. And to do this, go to your sweet nerves, click details down and drag this scale down to zero. And now you can see it goes into a peak. It sort of 
tails off if you go like that. And that is essentially our light rail, but it's always travelling in the position of X. Our particles are always travelling in the position of X, which I do not want. So come back to Espresso, go new node, thinking particles, uh, TP initiator, P pass, and you want to put your group in there. And then new node, thinking particles, TP standard, P alignment. Connect those two up. In the P alignment, change your type from random to direction of travel. And I'm going to put this to X because I like X better. Now we've got this happening. It looks a lot better in my point of view. Um, but it's up to you whether to do that or not. So you've got that working. Um, you can see you've got your trail happening here. If you render that out now, you can just see the edge of the trail and our star has gone. Interesting. If, maybe if I come round here and render, our star is still not showing. For some reason. And that is not meant to happen. Oh, if fade behind object is checked, uncheck that because we do not want it to fade if it is covered by the trail. For some reason, the star isn't showing up for me. I shall be back in two seconds when I figure out what has went wrong. Alright, I found what was happening. Um, on your light you will not want to change the colour of the actual light. You'll want to keep that white and you will then be able to see your star. Okay, so I've changed the animation slightly now. So what we get here is we see the star but we do not see our trail which is a bummer because if we want to see our trail we need to give a luminant texture to our trail but before we make that I'm just going to show you something quickly here you see it's jagged it sort of went straight we do not want that we want that to be nice and Curved, so you want to put your sweep nerves into a uh, hyper nerves. So I'm just going to hold Alt down and click on my hyper nerves, and that directly puts my sweep nerves for the object you want into the thing that you put into. That was a bad explanation, but now you see it's nice and curved. So now that we've got that, we want to create our material. So I'm going to come and put a colour on the material the same as I had on my light so that's 0, 38 and 47 474 okay nice dark green colour and would it come to luminance put the exact same colour on so it's all consistent and nice with each other and we are going to take specular off and we're going to put glow on change the outer glow to around 200 and put this to 15 the radius to 15 so we have that now we're going to put that onto our hypernerves and when we render it now we are able to see it like so although I would like to change the colours about so they're lighter just like that and there you have it that 
is how to create a light streak in Cinema 4D and you can do anything you like with this um, to animate it. I'm just gonna select my timeline, make this longer so I can see it all. Select these keyframes and delete them. You can get a spline and align it to your spline. So I've got a helix. You just want to click your emitter, put a line to align to spline tag on it. Your spline in there. Create a keyframe by controlling. Control clicking the position on um, the wee box of the position you'll see a red little red box. Go at the end of your timeline, put 100 and keyframe. So now when you watch that over, you get this effect. And I used this in my intro, you saw it at the start, so that is how I done that. So we've got this nice effect on here. But anyway, that is how to you. That was a load of muffle in my mouth. Um, that sounded really dodgy. I'm going to get a lot of crap in the comments for that. But that was how to create a light streak in Cinema 4D, similar to the ones you can create with Particular and After Effects. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.